Welcome. So we're going to address the five-fold ministry gifts. I'm your brother, Denzel. Thanks for watching. Just know on this channel, there's a lot of content about the prophetic. And me being a prophetic Christian, I don't want to be one-dimensional. I want the whole five-fold in my life. So if you're prophetic too, or if you're primarily an evangelist, if you're primarily a teacher, it's time to get stretched. First thing I want to address is that these are not man's gifts. Men do not get to pick who's a prophet and who's not, or who's an apostle and who's not. God picks his prophets. God picks his teachers and his evangelists. See, Jesus gave the gifts to men. Just look on the screen. We're going to talk about all five of the fivefold ministry gifts. The Bible says he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So let's talk about the apostles specifically. No better example than Paul. Second Corinthians. 1016, so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you without boasting of work already done in another area of influence. See, in this day and age, what I'm noticing is that people think that the apostolic is about having people under you or under your ministry. See, some would even accuse these type of ministers of having a pyramid scheme type of ministry where they're at the top and they go finding other churches in their region and sun them or put them under them when they've already existed and call that apostolic. See, the apostolic, according to many of the apostles in the Bible, is about kingdom expansion. Isn't it said that in Roman times, or at least the term apostle from the Roman culture, meant that these are those that are sent out by the leadership of Rome to expand the Roman Empire by taking over territory after territory? These are non-Roman empires becoming under the empire of Rome. And it's same with the apostles, is going into unchurched regions, unchristian regions, in creating churches, appointing elders, appointing leaders, planting good grounded systems for the kingdom to where that apostle can do their work of setting up that system and moving on to another region of unchurched people. If you're called to the apostolic, my best advice for you is to be a people person. Love people, care about people because you're going to be dealing with people for the rest of your life. Let's talk about the prophet. The prophet primarily functions as a spokesman for God, the one who foretells and the one who prophesies heavily. You are not a prophet based on input, imaginations, feelings, emotions, personal bias, but you are a prophet based on output, the prophetic, love for the word of God, and living a lifestyle of holiness. See, a prophet is a gifted speaker sent by God. You can look at many of the prophets in the Bible. You can see like even John the Baptist. Yeah, maybe he was a bit of an evangelist, but the Bible says that he was a prophet and he was able through his gift of communication to draw people by the masses of all walks of life to listen to him speak. This is because a prophet has divine hidden knowledge from God. Not saying outside of scripture, okay? Prophets do not go outside of scripture, but oftentimes prophets address scriptures that many miss, specifically because prophets heavily deal with calling out hypocrisy. Just like Jesus, many times when he spoke against the Pharisees, he was actually speaking against stuff that was already in the Old Testament. But they would just skate over it and just take little bits and pieces that they liked. So Jesus is like, hey, what about this scripture? What about your hypocrisy here? Prophets would deal with calling out hypocrisy a lot of times. But prophets also upbuild and encourage and comfort. Prophets heavily deal with prophecy. This is seeing visions, dreaming dreams. Prophets will hear the voice of God and serve the church, moving in the gift of prophecy. When I say prophecy, I mean divine revelation, hidden information that God has about other people around them. A prophet can go up to a complete stranger and give the word of the Lord, maybe give details on their life or things that God is processing in their heart. So a prophet not only speaks and communicates, but a prophet prophesies heavily. See, what I like about the evangelist, we're going to talk about the evangelist now. Similar to the apostle, an evangelist is sent out to the unchurched. See, back in my day, it would seem like the evangelists are those that go from church to church preaching the gospel. And I get that. I think evangelists should do they They should go from church to church because they have a gift of communicating well. And maybe they're calling Christians back into repentance. Maybe there's unsaved Christians in those churches that they minister to. To. But it's strange to me because an evangelist actually publicizes the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Many will say they're an evangelist, but won't go outside of the four walls. So you are an evangelist, not going from church to church, but you're an evangelist trying to go from soul to soul, 
winning souls to Jesus Christ. An evangelist has this unique gifting of drawing souls to Jesus. Similar to how flies, they'll get around the light bulb and even hit the light bulb and kill themselves. <laughs> Bad example. But an evangelist has this attractiveness about themselves where they draw souls into them to listen to them and eventually lead them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Or similar to that favorite bait that you use when you're fishing, it just draws those fish in. Evangelists have that gifting. Evangelists will preach repentance very often. They'll try to get people to come to Jesus as much as they can through their words and their communication gifts. Evangelists may even be gifted. They may have a certain gift such as music that draws masses of people to Jesus. But evangelists are about articulating the gospel of Jesus Christ. An evangelist should be able to articulate how someone should be saved. And of course, that's by placing their faith in Jesus and repenting of sin and trusting Jesus. Now we're going to talk about the pastor, okay? The pastor. Pastors are known for shepherding. Pastors also have a teaching gift that feeds God's sheep. See, pastors have discernment for wolves that try to scatter the flock. See, the shepherd or the pastor gift is similar to Christ. They lay down their life for the sheep. Oftentimes, pastors, they sacrifice so much and go unappreciated, serving, giving of their time, neglecting their families even at times just to serve the body of Christ. It's a holy calling. And the reason why they sacrifice so much is not necessarily their personality traits. It's that inner detector that's calling them and drawing them into the call of God. See, while people in this generation underestimate the office of the pastor, and sometimes we talk so much about the apostle and the prophet, we cannot forget the pastors because a lot of times they do go unappreciated for their service and faithfulness to the call. See, many of the sheep that the pastor shepherd will come and go sometimes. They'll love the pastor and praise him one minute. The next minute, they're calling him a demon or a Jezebel. And this causes sheep bites that tries to bring offense to the pastor. But pastors eventually will forgive and love and stay faithful to the call and continue to shepherd the sheep. The teacher, the teacher, the teacher. Teachers rightly divide the word of truth. Teachers, they hold you accountable to scripture. See, while some get lazy with their teachings, that teacher, he'll probably just be looking at you in the eyes as you teach and hold you accountable by their presence because they rightly divide the word. They've done the work. A teacher will perk up and say, no, that's not right. That's error. <laughs> no, nah, bro, that's not right. The Bible actually says this. See, teachers can be often very inquisitive towards God. Even the Greek word for teacher, a lot of times I would say it sounds like did ask a lot because teachers do ask a lot of questions towards God. See, some may not understand the teacher because teachers care so much about teaching, and some may label them legalistic with the word of God, but that's not a teacher's intentions. The teacher just wants to do their job of rightly dividing the word. See, the word of God stands true, and teachers, they try to uphold that law or that word that's higher than any other level of authority. The word of God is the highest authority there is. So as we're discussing all of the fivefold gifts, the thing is we're all called to work together. See, a prophet might get hurt at times. And when that prophet gets hurt, he might create an echo chamber of a bunch of prophets and forget all about evangelism or teaching, caught up in visions and dreams and the prophetic. And sometimes the pastor might make it all about the people forgetting the things and deep things of God, as the prophet would. See, all the gifts have strengths and weaknesses. No one has it all together, okay? Think of it this way. Some say the apostle is like the thumb. They hold everyone together. They hold everyone accountable because they're known for establishing churches, ordaining apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Whereas the prophet is the index finger. He points out, he discerns, he calls a spade a spade. A prophet, while everyone's ignoring the problem, the prophet will point at the elephant in the room. An evangelist is the longest finger, the middle finger, as you can see. It reaches out outside of the church. It goes for the lost souls. And sometimes we forget that. And the pastor is like the ring finger, committed to the church, okay? Committed to the people of God and is serious about shepherding people and seeing them grow and develop with patience. And the teachers like the pinky, they get in your ear, they'll dig in there, they'll make sure that what you're hearing is sound doctrine and sound truth. You definitely want to be aware of that. See, I'm not trying to be cliche here, but... A lot of times we get into echo chambers. Pastors hang around pastors, apostles hang around apostles, teachers hang around teachers, prophets, prophets, and evangelists, evangelists. 
And a lot of times, if we're not careful, we'll X out all the other gifts. And then we create this type of Christianity that does not have the fullness of Christ. What we want to do and what the goal was of Ephesians chapter four and then 11 and on down is that we were to mature in Christ so that we be not tossed to and fro. We all need each other. So if you're one of the fivefold gifts, even if you're not, please expose yourself to all sides of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the shepherd and the teacher get the fullness of Christ. I love y'all. Look, I got other content on the prophetic. This one was more broad about all the gifts. So if you could please like this video and subscribe to the channel.